technological proficiency, SSU offers its students a friendly, safe, and informal atmosphere on a beautiful campus setting. Our first stop on the tour is the University Library. Upon entering the building, you will first see the University Library Gallery. It displays two- and three-dimensional works of art by students, professional artists, selections from the University Library's unique collections, and material from traveling exhibitions. Exhibits are intended to align with the SSU mission and curriculum and inspire discussion and debate beyond the gallery walls. The library provides a wide range of services to help you achieve your academic goals. The library has over 200 computers throughout the building for your use, with a wide array of software installed. You can easily print, scan, and make photocopies in the library. Looking for a place to study with a group? Just want some peace and quiet? The library can help. We have all kinds of study spaces to meet anyone's studying preferences. A home to everyday activities, quality services, and exceptional events, the Student Center is a focal point of student life and a place to connect, engage, and experience. Sonoma State is proudly the home of a diverse population of students and staff. The Student Center's unique and flexible spaces will welcome and accommodate all members of this community serving their various out-of-classroom experiences. Sonoma State is home to a plethora of dining venues that are sure to satisfy your taste buds. From the warm eatery of Charlie Brown's Cafe to a wide variety of options at the kitchens, we have something for everyone. Check out the game at Lobo's or take in the tree-lined view at Overlook for your next meal. The University Store offers a large selection of general and reference books, a wide variety of SSU Seawolf apparel and souvenirs, student and art supplies, gifts, stationery, and food. The University Store is located on the second floor of the Student Center. The Campus Recreation Center has many great opportunities to stay fit and have fun. With no additional costs, students and members can use the Fitness Center, the Mount Everest and Mount Denali Room, Multi-Activity Court, the Locker Rooms, Spa, Pool, Game Room and Equipment at their own discretion. Also featured in the Rec Center is the Climbing Wall. It seeks to create a supportive and strong climbing community that fosters physical and mental wellness for climbers of all abilities while providing climbers with technical skills necessary for both safety and success at any venue. Want to take a break from your studies? Our campus is surrounded by lakes, nature trails, and gardens for you to get some exercise and clear your mind. As a cornerstone of Sonoma State University's commitment to the arts, the Green Music Center is a place to witness artistic inspiration through year-round programming, serving as home to the Sonoma State University Music Department, the Santa Rosa Symphony, and Sonoma Bach. The goal of the Sonoma State University Department of Intercollegiate Athletics is to provide a positive, equitable, and diverse environment for the student athletes and staff. We offer a wide array of athletic facilities and sports programs for our students, such as basketball and volleyball courts, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, tennis courts, and baseball and softball fields. Sonoma State provides safe, convenient, suite, and apartment-style housing options for more than 3,200 students in six unique villages. All units are fully furnished and carpeted with their own living rooms and bathrooms, and apartment units contain fully equipped kitchens. Each village has common laundry rooms, and robust Wi-Fi is available in all residential and non-residential spaces across the campus. 
Thank you for visiting Sonoma State University. We are proud to serve a diverse student population on our beautiful campus. Sonoma State drives the economic, cultural, and educational engines of the North Bay and prepares students for meaningful citizenship in a complex world. Perfect. So hopefully that gave you, you know, I tried to bring Sonoma State today to, um, although you're not here in person, give you a little glimpse of what it's like to be a student here um, in, in terms of our academics, in terms of the beautiful housing that we have here at the university. Um, so giving you a little quick glimpse um, into what it means to be a student here. Um, so to kick off kind of just a general information about Sonoma State, we were established in 1961. We're a part of the 23 uh, California State University system. So one of the largest uh, universities University systems in the country and in the world. Um, and we're located here in Roanoke Park, California, which is about um, 45 minutes to an hour north of San Francisco. So not too far um, from the Bay Area, not too far from the beautiful beaches here um, in California. Uh, we're also known to be in, in what we call the beautiful wine country. So if you've ever had an opportunity to visit Napa Valley or Sonoma Valley, um, we're, you're not too far from, um, from beautiful wineries and beautiful absolutely sceneries here um, in the Northern um, Bay Area. Um, here at the university, Currently, our population is about 8,000 8, students, and this is including both undergraduate and graduate students. So we are a fairly smaller institution, not the smallest, but one of a, uh, a much smaller institution compared um, to our sister campuses. Um, our SSU mascot is the Sea Wolf, which is a mythical creature from the Jack London novel series, very popular here in the Northern Bay Area. Um, and so that is where our mascot came from. Um, a couple more information about uh, student life here at the university. We have 22 fraternity and sorority organizations on campus, um, including three local chapters and seven multicultural organizations. Um, and almost about 20% 20 20 of our student population is involved um, in some organization, uh, whether that's a fraternity or a sorority. We have over 120 different clubs on campus, many of them that are focused on academics, social, um, a lot of that um, that are focused on faith, cultural and fraternity and sorority. Um, and oftentimes we tell our students if there's nothing, you know, that really interests you, you can start your own organization um, and you only need about five members to start that and an advisor. Uh, so, we, you know, we really are a student driven campus. So I always wanna make sure that our students have something to do, something to get involved in, um, especially during their first year here at the university. All right, so of course we wanna, you know, brag a little bit about our statistics and where we're currently landing um, in terms of ranking across the state of California. Um, currently we are number one when it comes to two-year graduation rates for transfer students in the CSU system, um, which is something that we're really proud of. Um, we're number four when it comes to freshman four-year graduation rate in the CSU system as well. Um, so that means that we're not only focusing on providing our students a well-rounded education, um, but we're also making sure that they are enjoying their college experience, but also graduating in a timely manner. Um, so that means that we're offering a lot of proactive um, and high touch programs from the moment that they step foot on campus to the moment that they are uh, leaving, whether that is meeting with an advisor. Um, if you are a first generation student, you can expect to be getting a lot of support um, from various programs as well. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, the main goal of graduate, uh, well, the main goal after graduation is to also get a job. We have a very high touch program with our career center to ensure um, that our students are getting matched with internships, um, also with uh, various jobs within the state of California. I think you also got a little glimpse into our beautiful housing. We are uh, number one best housing in the CSU system, according to niche.com. And I'll talk a little bit more about housing in another slide. Um, and then also currently number three, most amazing campus art center. And then our faculty to fa or student to faculty ratio um, currently is 23 to one. So that means that our students um, and faculty member are having a very tight knit community. Um, students, you know, if you're missing class, they'll know when you're not there. Um, but that also is a great opportunity to build close relationships with faculty members. Um, if you need a letter of recommendation, if you need a, a recommendation for a job, anything like that, um, I think that's definitely one of the perks of coming to a smaller institution, um, because you are able to build that tight community here at the university. Perfect. And yes, please, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to put those in the chat. 
All right, so talking a little bit more about academic opportunities. Here at Sonoma State, we have um, over 45 different majors and 70 different distinct concentrations that students are able to choose from. Um, one of the ones that I always like to highlight, for example, that's very uh, unique to Sonoma State would be our business administration program. Um, within business, students have about five to six different concentrations that they're able to pick from. So for example, um, a one that's very unique to Sonoma State is uh, wine business. So we don't necessarily focus on how to make wine, but we focus more on the marketing and the selling of the product. It makes sense also because of our region um, where we are located. Um, another highly impacted program is biology um, as well as chemistry. Um, and so those also have uh, various concentrations that students are able to choose from, whether that is marine biology, zoology, um, biochemistry, all of those programs are offered for our students. Um, students also have the opportunity to further their research and showcase what it is that they've learned throughout the semester in various symposiums throughout the year. Um, and so it's a great opportunity for students to put their names on research papers, on research projects, and really start building their portfolio so that they are more, uh, more marketable when they start looking for a job. We also offer over 64 study abroad programs for students on six different continents. Um, and we have been ranked number five in the US for study abroad programs. So that means that we have a lot a good amount of students who are hoping to go to another country to immerse themselves in a different culture um, and really also kind of complement their their degree program. Um, so it's always a great opportunity. I know right now due to you know, all of the COVID restrictions, these uh, programs have not been um, in place, but we, you know, the hope is that we can definitely continue that on uh, potentially in the spring or even next academic school year. All right, so any of you who are, uh, you know, athletic fanatics, we are part of the NCAA um, Division II athletics and some of the sports that we currently are offering are basketball, baseball, golf, soccer, softball, and volleyball. Um, any of the uh, students who are interested in playing for the university, um, the recruitment piece is a little bit different. Um, so, you know, typically they'll go in and recruit the students themselves. But if you are interested in doing tryouts or meeting with the coach, you can always reach out to my office and the student, uh, student outreach and recruitment and we're able to make that connection with you as well. Um, some clubs uh, that we also, club sports that we offer are cheer, dance, equestrian, uh, lacrosse, rowing, and rugby. Um, and so if you are interested in um, getting involved and in playing on any of these sports, um, but maybe not the competitive level of a division two sport, then you are able to um, be a part of a club, a club sport here at the university. They're just as competitive. Um, you know, they're competing with other CSUs in the area. And so it's a, it's a great time for those students who are hoping to um, stay active, but also build that community here at the university. Alrighty, so one of my favorite pieces to talk about is campus housing. Um, let me tell you, when I was a student here at the university, I was first generation, you know, I come from a low income background. So when I lived on campus, I felt like I was living in a palace. These are suite and apartment style um, options for students. And so um, that means that, you know, they're not traditional housing. It's not a dorm. Um, you know, you're not sharing a bathroom with a whole hallway. Um, these are just individualized apartment and suite styles for our students. Uh, and so the great thing is that housing is guaranteed for our first time, first years and transfer students. So as long as a student submits their application before May 1st, they're guaranteed a spot here on campus. Um, and although that, you know, we don't require students to come and live on campus, 90% of our first year students choose to do so. Um, and that has to do because um, it's convenient, right? It's, you know, about a five to 10 minute walk away from campus. Um, a lot of the amenities that students are receiving right now, um, you know, make it a great, make, make it a great experience. So for example, um, I know this year, uh, we are offering free parking permits to students who are living on campus, um, including in your rent is cable, Wi-Fi, um, you know, laundry is free. There's no having to carry around coins or having to carry around an ID um, to do laundry. It's all free for you um, as part of that monthly rent. Um, I also always like to share that, you know, some of these apartments are also, they also have stainless steel appliances, heated floors for those cold mornings. So it really does not feel like it's a college dorm. It feels like it's just a beautiful um, apartment. So um, students are also, also able to get involved with living learning communities. So um, some of the learning communities that we currently have 
um, is VIBES. Uh, VIBES is for students who identify as um, Black or African American. Um, they can live in that community um, with other folks. There, there's an RA, which is a student leader who does a lot of programming, who does a lot of um, kind of that support for our students. Uh, we also have one for students who are first generation, who want to live with other students who are first generation to the university, who want to also experience um, SSU um, with like-minded people. Uh, we also have some that are around wellness and fitness. You know, if you want to live with people who like going on hikes and like being, you know, staying active in the community, um, then, then it makes sense for you to be living with folks um, that share that same kind of interest. Um, and so, yes, a lot of amazing opportunities here on campus. I always encourage, you know, it's, it's a big selling point for us, but it's also just an amazing experience for students. Um, it truly does shape and form how students experience the university when they are living um, on campus. Perfect. So moving into some campus resources. Um, these are just, you know, a small list of the services that we offer here at the university. Um, you know, and I could spend all evening talking to you about them. Um, but some of the ones that I really want to highlight um, that really shape the experience of Sonoma State students um, are our EOP program. Um, EOP is the Educational Opportunity Program, which um, exists, I believe, on all 23 campuses. It is um, a, a program that, that started through the CSUs. Um, and EOP supports our first generation and historically low-income students. Um, and so those students who are admitted to this program, they will go through a, uh, a four-week summer bridge program uh, where they will take uh, a set of courses um, that satisfy four graduation requirements um, all for free. There's no cost to the student. Um, there's no cost associated with this orientation. Um, and during those four weeks, you're not only taking courses, but you're also building community. Um, you're starting to, to realize that other folks are going through the same experience, especially if you're first gen. Um, and so we make sure that all of those students are feeling supported before they even step foot on campus. Um, this past year, we did our EOP Summer Bridge orientation online. They still build a nice community, um, even remotely. Um, some of the other, uh, sorry, some of the other campus resources that we have um, are academic advising. So if students have any uh, questions on what to major in, if they have questions on maybe changing their major, they're unsure of what it is they want to do, um, our students can go to the Academic Advising Center. Uh, we also have the Hub, which is our multicultural center on campus. They do a lot of programming, a lot of support for our students um, and our students of color. Uh, we have our Learning and Academic Resource Center. Um, in other words, this is the place to go for tutoring or if you need any support on uh, writing a paper, anything like that. Um, another great program is our Military and Veteran Resource Center for students who are um, either veterans or who are military affiliated. They can go and receive some support as well. Um, and then we have Seawolf Scholar. Seawolf Scholar is for students who are um, current or former foster youth. They'll receive um, a lot of financial resources, but also a lot of support uh, with academic advising, uh, transition support, uh, you know, what, the, what does it mean now to be a student? Um, and so their, their program is really phenomenal for, for our students in those, um, in those groups. All righty. If there's anything that you want to take from this presentation, this probably would be a, a big, big piece. Um, so admission at the CSU level, um, this is for the most part uh, similar, you know, within 23 of 23 campuses. Um, but just something to put out there is that we are an impacted campus, which means that we do have um, about, I, be, I think this year is about eight to 10 majors that are impacted, uh, which means that they have um, additional requirements um, from the ones that I'm about to kind of run through. Um, so for those of you who are first time or would be applying to the university as a first time first year, uh, really what we're looking at is that you obviously graduate high school or that you're, you know, moving forward in, in terms of graduating. Um, and then we're going to be looking at those A through G requirements. Those are going to be your English, your math classes, history, you know, maybe you're a part of AVID or maybe you're a part of any kind of elective courses. That's really the ones that we'll be looking at. There's a big list on our website that you can kind of go and, um, and see what it is that you need to take. Um, but we are asking that you take those courses with a C minus or better. Uh, if your GPA is below a 2.5 GPA, um, then we will use something called the first time first year multi-factor scoring system. Um, and that means is, you know, basically what that, mean, what that means is that we are 
uh, we want you obviously to be admitted to the university, um, but because you're below a 2.5, we're going to look at other, um, other factors to kind of give you a little bump. So for example, if you are at a 2.3 GPA, but you are highly involved in your community, you maybe are first generation, uh, maybe you're involved with any TRIO programs, um, those, those kinds of um, uh, experiences will give you a little bump um, so that you can reach that 2.5. Um, and so we really want to make sure that you are getting it admitted. We don't ever want to turn students away. Um, and so we want to provide you know, a, a good accessible experience to our students. Um, in addition to what I just mentioned, some programs are impacted. So there could be um, specific GPA requirements that you need to meet. For example, if you're interested in kinesiology, which is a study of movement, the study of like physical therapy, um, you know, they have an additional requirement, which is a 2.5 GPA. So that's really what they're looking for. Um, you might find a criminal justice program, for example, and their uh, main G or minimum GPA is a 3.0. So then again, you know, really just uh, it, it differs by program. And so I always encourage folks to look at our website beforehand so you have a better idea of what it is that you need to do. If you decide not to apply to Sonoma State University, you know, right out of high school, maybe you want to do the college, uh, community college track. There are two different areas um, of transfer admission that I'll offer you today. Uh, one of them is a lower division transfer student. You know, maybe you start at a community college your first semester, you know, maybe you'll continue on to your second semester and you make a decision that you no longer want to be at a community college, you want to transfer now to Sonoma State University. What we'll do is that, um, you know, we'll be looking at two set of courses. So that's just a regular English class and a math class. Um, and you would be considered a lower division transfer student. So that means that you haven't necessarily completed 60 units, which means that you're below, um, in other words, the junior level. Um, if you decide to do two, two and a half years at a community college, um, you complete at least 60 transferable semester units then you would be considered an upper division transfer student and you can come in um, and join us as an upper division transfer student. And what we're looking for there is again, a minimum of a 2.0 and then the completion of what we call the golden fours, which is English, great communication, critical thinking and math. Um, and so the reason I present these two options is because I know, you know, we, we definitely, you know, would love to have you uh, straight out of high school, but we do understand that there are other options um, that you can take. Um, and so I think presenting this is, is really nice and gives you a better picture. Um, you know, if you ne aren't necessarily maybe ready to, to join us right out of high school, there are some other options as well. All right, so to give you a little quick timeline, um, our fall application opens October 1st and November 30th. So if any of you here on the call are seniors um, and, and you're thinking on applying for fall semester, that is your timeline. Uh, we actually just closed our spring application for students who maybe are thinking of transferring to Sonoma State. Um, and this is the first year actually that we also admitted first time first years um, for the spring semester just because of COVID and everything, um, that definitely has allowed us to, to be a little bit more flexible with our um, admission cycles. Um, we also have a Sonoma State Scholarship Program, which I encourage all students to apply, not only to this one, but to all scholarship programs. Um, apply, apply, apply. Um, and so ours closes on February 1st, and this is open to current and also prospective students. Um, also a general reminder that our FAFSA and Cal or the California DREAM Act application is due March 2nd, um, at least for Sonoma State, that's sort of our priority deadline if you're hoping to receive any kind of uh, grants or loans or any, uh, any sort of financial aid. Um, admission decisions, you typically will hear from us um, anytime from December to March. Um, and so once that application closes on November 30th, we start admitting students um, based on that information that you provided us. Uh, we also ask our students to finalize their admission and housing decisions by May 1st. That's kind of the, the general uh, deadline. And then final transcripts are typically due to us by July 10th. Um, that's kind of the, the cutoff um, to ensure that you are meeting all the requirements right before uh, the beginning of the semester. All right, and so some COVID-19 student updates that I wanted to share with you um, is that CSU campuses currently will accept credit or pass for courses that, um, have, that have been completed to satisfy those A through G requirements. Um, so if, you know, within the past year and a half, you've taken any of those A through G requirements as a pass or credit, uh, we will take those as, um, uh, as satisfying essentially for admission decisions. 
Uh, we will also continue to temporarily suspend the use of ACT and SAT examinations for the 2022 and 2023 academic year. Um, so in other words, this is going to be um, temporarily suspended up until spring 2023. Um, and so, you know, that's just something to note, um, not only for Sonoma State, but also for the, you know, the other CSUs as well. Um, and then also we'll continue to honor any AP scores that, or any AP exams that are taken um, in, you know, regardless of the modality, as long as you receive a three or above, we will take those scores as well. Perfect. All right, before I go ahead into that video, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a little student life video, give you a little, another little glimpse of what it's like to be a student here, um, and then we'll move forward. Perfect. So I know that I presented a lot of information to you this evening, um, but I also encourage you to stay connected with us, um, specifically with my office, which is the Office of Student Outreach and Recruitment. If there are any questions um, about pre-admissions, if you have questions about the application, maybe about uh, picking the right major, um, or maybe just any questions about our institution, please reach out to us. Um, you can give us a call um, or reach out via email to outreach.sonoma.edu. Um, if you are a student who then applies to the university, um, you will then be working with the Office of Admissions. Um, they are the ones that will evaluate your application. They'll ask for transcripts. Um, they're the ones that kind of just, you know, take you through that funnel. Uh, we also encourage you to reach out to financial aid. Um, they have a lot of, you know, resources and support for our students, um, whether that is with the FAFSA form or if you have questions just about um, the cost of attending Sonoma State, they're definitely, um, you know, they're available to, to assist you as well. Um, and then housing, of course, I wanted to, you know, plug them in there as well. If there's any questions about the housing options um, that our students can experience, you can always reach out to them. Um, and then, of course, our social media platforms are very active on Facebook, Instagram, um, and Twitter. Um, and I encourage all, you know, family members, students, prospective students to go in and, and follow us on social media um, because it really does allow you to get a little glimpse of what it's like here at the university, um, especially these you know, next few weeks. We just opened up um, campus about two and a half weeks ago, um, and so there's a lot of um, activity going on at the university that, that I encourage you to stay connected with. Um, and so I'll leave this up just for a few more seconds if you want to screenshot, take a picture of it, whatever works for you. Ricardo? Yes. I just a good time to tell the students that usually I have a ritual a tradition that I do once I have outreach, speak to the students, and they actually apply to Sonoma. Uh, while they're waiting, I make sure we have usually a, a night where you get to come on Zoom. I was doing this, I did this before the pandemic. Come on with the uh, students from multicultural and the Black student group, also the uh, young men's Black student group. They're very, very excellent for keeping you engaged keeping you on the campus. I mean, you should be running across the whole gamut of college experiences, but they're very good at uh, reaching out to students and getting them involved as well. I know Ricardo knows about them. They think it's a cool dude. So, you know, I know he knows. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, we have, I think one of the best things about Sonoma State, um, as I said before, um, is that it's a campus that is run by students for students. And so, yes. 
Um, you know, from the moment that you step foot on campus, whether it's a campus tour, um, which I'm going to go ahead and put a link in our in the chat here. Um, we're not open right now for for larger groups, but if you ever find yourself um, in the area and you want to come with your family, um, you can sign up for an individual tour. Um, you get to go into a residential community, and so um, those are open uh, to folks. So if you ever find yourself um, here in, in in the Northern Bay Area, then I um, definitely encourage you to do that. But um, but yes, you know, student organizations, um, we have a lot of um, affinity groups also, not only for our students, but also for our faculty. Um, I'm a part of uh, what we call Alianza for Equity. So it's for um, faculty who are Latino or Latina. Uh, we have the BFSA, which is Black Faculty and Staff Alliance. They do a lot of work with BSU as well here at the university. Um, and so we're doing, you know, doing the best that, that we can to support all of our students and to ensure that students are feeling supported. Um, I think, you know, I graduated from Sonoma State University back in 2016. Um, and I don't think there's a better time for, you know, first generation or underrepresented students to be here at the university because there's a lot of resources, there's a lot of money that's coming in um, to, to ensure that our students are, are feeling supported and graduating. So. I see some hands up. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to um, unmute yourself. Feel free to ask away. Sister Candy. Sister Candy, go ahead. Speak right up. Open your microphone. Okay, I got it. Sorry about that. No problem. <laughs> no worries. The question that I have when I was looking at the videos, I was just, you know, kind of curious, curious, but you, uh, you and Deacon Wilson can answer because I was a little bit concerned about the, uh, I'm sorry, I was a little bit concerned because I, I didn't have to see no minority or people of color or even Hispanic, and I would want to have a, you know, they'd be treated there because so much race is going on in the world today, and it's a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And how would they how would they protect uh, the kids on the campus? Or, or, so yeah, I'll let him. Have, I want him to answer that first. But I have some things to tell you further than what I said a minute ago. Yeah, yes, you know, uh, a valid question. Um, I can tell you, you know, from the from the time that when I was a student here which is a few years ago, um, from 2011 to 2016, yeah. um, you know, in terms of the experience uh, that underrepresented students um, went through is very different than, than now, even in the political climate that we, that we live in. Yeah. Um, in terms of the resources, you know, one of the great things that in 2016, we um, got a new president, President Judy Sakaki, who's the first Japanese American president um, in the country. Um, and she established our Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Division, um, which is an office that, you know, is supporting all of our um, underrepresented students, but also underrepresented faculty and staff, because we do have staff um, right. on campus that are underrepresented. Um, in terms of the hub, which I mentioned is our multicultural um, organization on, or kind of a department on campus, they do a lot of programming, a lot of support for our students. Um, and I, I won't lie to you, you know, we are definitely underrepresented, not only at Sonoma State, but in higher education in general, right? Period. All over. No, yeah, we know that higher education was not made for us, but we're here, right? We're present. Uh, we are getting degrees. We're graduating, and that's you know that's the most important piece. But yes, you bring up a, a great question of what support um, is there, um, and so those are kind of the ones that I mentioned in terms of EOP, those programs that are supporting our first generation right. historically low income students. Um, they're bringing in a lot of diversity to campus, um, and it's not just about bringing them and, and getting them in, but um, I'm a big, uh, you know, my, my philosophy is that we, we need to be offering them support throughout their time to retain them. Um, you know, I mentioned Vibes, for example, which is a, a learning community for African-American students or Black students in the housing community. That was right. never there before. Now we have a, a, a group of students who want to live together and, and they're like, you know what? I want folks to, who share the same background as me, I wanna, I wanna live with them. Um, and housing has been very flexible um, and, and, and moving that forward, moving that idea forward. Um, and so, so yeah, so you know, I know in, our, in our, um, a lot of our promotional items, um, I'm new to this office, I started in January um, and I've been pushing for that, right? I, I also don't wanna create a, a, a falsified image of what it's like to be at Sonoma State, but those videos are definitely a little bit outdated in terms of right. how diverse Sonoma State is now. Um, oh, okay. We reached um, also Hispanic, uh, we're a Hispanic serving institute now, which means that over 34% of our students um, identify as Hispanic or Latinx. 
Um, and so, so we're making progress. Um, we haven't gotten there yet, um, but I, I, I do think that because of the new leadership that we have here at the university, um, our vice president, who actually came from Dominguez Hills, Dr. Uh, Gregory yeah. Sawyer. I um, know, I know him. I know him, yes, he's, he's a phenomenal. Cool so, um, you know, we, we're making some change here at the university, and, our, and I think our students are a big, um, you know, the, the people that really have been driving that change here at the university. I'm glad yeah, you answered that because I was just, you know, curious within the three, four years, you know, with the races that have been going on. But my kids do love volleyball, so I do like the idea that you do have volleyball. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I, when I look across my, my schools, not just CSUs, and I have this top 10 school concept, Sister Candy, I know you know about that. Uh, <laughs> that's one characteristic of all my top 10s. And Sonoma has been a leader in, in, in one other school, but Sonoma has been a leader in even before all this stuff this year, uh, reaching out to minorities. So my black students feel very comfortable at Sonoma. I never had an incident. I mean, a lot of them did boneheaded things, but that's not related to race. Right. OK. Uh, <laughs> right. Please don't get me started on that now. Uh, but <laughs> but but that's not race. That's not race. And they've been, always when I've intervened with students, they've been so respectful to me and and my students, you got some giants on the faculty, on the staff that will look out for your student. So I wouldn't worry even about that at Sonoma at all. Incidentally, parents, you might be interested in knowing that this, where I've had my most race pro problems with students, when I've had a few I've had across the country, it might shock you. It's been the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. It's never in the West or California, or even, remember I have students at Boise State. It's just never in those schools. I can't, I can't explain it. But that's my experience. Okay, that's uh, that's all I can say there. Great question, Sister Candy. Yes, absolutely. Anybody else? Deacon Wilson, I think Kelly has a question. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Open that mic. Let's have it. Uh, hi. Hello. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. This is my super eleventh grader. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kelly Wise. Um, I had a question about your average GPA acceptance rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our acceptance rate currently is, um, I will tell you from last year, or I would say the last two years, is currently at 90%. Um, and I'll tell you why that is. Uh, we have been uh, yes. trying to build a better presence in our local community. Um, surprisingly, we've, we've been getting a lot of students from Southern California, you know, Los Angeles oh. is actually one of my biggest counties. Um, and so, you know, we we're trying to be more accessible, right, in terms of equity, in terms of who who we're reaching out to. Um, and so the last year we've focused on our, on our surrounding six counties. Um, that doesn't really mean anything for those that are in LA County, you know, we're still admitting you and everything like that. Um, but, but we really have, uh, we've changed the admission process um, to give those students who are in our, in our, you know, in our backyard um, admission to the university. Um, but also with the multi-factor scoring system that I mentioned um, for students who are below a 2.5, uh, we are, you know, really big on, you know, essentially breaking the barriers that, that keep students um, away from higher education. And so if you are below a 2.5, we're going to be looking at things like, you know, community service hours. I know. I know. I know. Um, if you are involved in the community doing whatever it is that you might be doing. And so that has increased our, um, our acceptance rate. Um, in terms of GPA, really, we're looking at around that 2.5. But on average, our students are coming in um, well above a 3.0, 3.0, 3.5. Yeah. Um, and so, so that's kind of, kind of where we're at right now. I don't know the, the profile of this incoming class. We're still kind of getting that situated, but um, that's currently where we're at. Yeah, you, they can really get away with that, look at the students holistically, because they're such a good, retentive environment there. Exactly. Students, that's why they can get away with that. But mm -hmm. hey, look, I have a comment, Kelly, though. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, you ain't gonna have no trouble, girl. You'll get in. I mean, I'm saying that a year ahead of time. I'm bad. Hey, Ricardo, I'm bad, man. No, they, they I can assure you, yes. And, you know, they won't just get in, but, but they're going to be supported. And, and, you know, I wouldn't be 
Um, She's a really good student. I guess my, my job is obviously to, to sell the university, but I also, um, I, I wanna push students just to go to higher education in general. Um, and I can't tell you how many students have come through my office. They come through uh, my former office. I used to work with, um, with EOP supporting first-gen students and low income. Um, and, and it's just great. It's a great time to be here at Sonoma State. Hey, Jillian, you want to ask something? I see Jillian's here today. No, you cool? Um, I didn't have my hand up, but yeah. uh, is there anything like, you said there's like a lot of nature and stuff surrounding the um, campus. Can you talk a little bit more about like the other stuff that you guys have nearby? Yeah. Oh, man, I love it. Go ahead, man. Yeah, sometimes you might think that we're in the middle of nowhere. I thought that I'm actually from San Francisco, which I'm, you know, I'm used to the very quick city life. Um, but so Roner Park is a is a small suburban town. Um, and then we have Santa Rosa, which is about 10 to 15 minutes north from us. Um, whenever I need, you know, some good, you know, good food, good Mexican food, uh, <laughs> if get some stores, I will go to Santa Rosa, right? Roner Park has some good, good spots as well. But, um, you know, it has been evolving within the last few years. Actually, Runner Park, um, our city council, um, is the most diverse that we've had in many years. We have someone who identifies as um, Latino on the city council. We have um, our vice mayor is from, um, I believe, from Ghana. Um, and then our mayor is yeah. heavily involved with Sonoma State. So there's a lot um, of, of change happening here in town. Um, but in terms of what to do, right? Yes, there's hiking. There's a lot of you know, nature around us. Uh, we have the beach, which is Bodega Bay, about 30 minutes away from campus. Um, and for students who don't have a car on campus, um, Sonoma State will do trips, whether that is to the movie, movie theaters, shopping, um, out to the city, to San Francisco. Um, and so, so there's a little bit of everything to do on campus, but also here in the community. Um, so yeah, so I mean, it's just a biz, it's, it's a, a city like any other, a much smaller, a lot slower paced, I would say than, than LA, but um, that's the, I think, you know, a lot of our students really enjoy that. And that's one of the reasons why they sometimes stick <clears throat> it home, um, here in, in Sonoma County, because it's very slow paced, um, but you also have um, a lot of access really to, to businesses um, and to, to kind of the city life in San Francisco as well. So Ricardo, is there a best time to visit Sonoma State? I would say, you know, right now, right now we are now in, in you know, mostly in person. Um, and so if you want to get an ex kind of an idea of what it's like to be a student, um, this is the best time. Summers are nice, but you won't really see much action on campus um, because students are really here. Um, yeah, so if you come here now um, or even in the spring, um, you know, I, I think those two times are really the best times to, to visit us. Um, Weather-wise, it's getting a little chilly right now, um, <laughs> but, you know, chilly for us. I don't know what chilly might be for you. Yeah, that's why I laughed at you. Right? <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so, you know, right now we are offering in-person tours on Wednesdays, Fridays, and every other Saturday. Um, oh, and Wednesday, so, Friday, every other Saturday. Okay. Wednesday, yeah. Friday, every other Saturday. Okay. So, I, I put the link in the chat. Um, I think right now we only have it up probably until for the rest of the month. Um, and so we kind of roll out the dates um, month by monthly um, because of the ever changing, you know, requirements and, and policy from the CDC. So uh, we really can't plan out that far. But but so far we've been, you know, having some some great experiences with um, families coming to visit us. Individual families. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we would just use the document that's listed here, then the chat that you put to sign right, up yeah. for. So that would be the form. Um, I also encourage you all to fill out uh, what we call an inquiry form. And so I'll put that also in the chat. Um, this is if you're interested in just staying up to date with scholarship information, application right. deadlines, things like tours. Um, and so by filling out the form, you're not, you know, you're not committing yourself to the university. It's just an opportunity for you to stay up to date with. Um, with a lot of the information that we roll out. Okay. Yeah, I also uh, dropped in there while you were speaking, Ricardo, great point you made, super point you made about, I see you updated your presentation to match AB 104. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd be commended for that, sir. Uh, but uh, I also put in the chat, I did a video on it. Just uh, go there, you can see the document I used for the video. Parents, I sent the video last week too, because you can do pass fail. In some cases, some of you wonder whether you should. I did a nice video on it last week, and I'm impressed that he mentioned it today here. Yes, no, of course. You know, it's, it's definitely a big thing that 
you know, we've uh, not only here at Sonoma State, but within the CSC, we're definitely pushing and, and encourage right. students to, to be mindful of that, that you can do that. So perfect. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? Anything that's on your mind? Did we forget anything, Quinn or uh, Christina? Those are my brains are here today. <laughs> Quinn and Christina. Uh, let me check, but I think we're good. Okay. And Christina, Quinn and Bicou, can think of anything be cool? Perfect. Well, I will go ahead and put my information um, in the chat. I'll also put my email address. Um, office phone, I won't put just because I'm still working remote. And so that's probably yeah, not the way right. to reach me. But um, if you want to reach me via email, I can answer any questions. I can meet with you one on one. Um, I can answer questions about, you know, the courses that you should be taking, the ones that you shouldn't. Um, anything that has to do with Sonoma State, I'm more than happy to talk to you about. So um, again, thank you so much for, for having me. And I, I love the, the, the involvement of parents as well. Um, this is also, um, you know, really nice to see. So nice. We're glad to have you. And parents, of course, you know, we'll be assisting seniors with their CSU applications. Just uh, get a hold of me. Get, have your college readiness meeting. If you already had that, we're already helping you now. You just don't know it. Uh, so uh, de definitely want to give you support for submitting an application. We're aiming for the first week of October, everybody, okay? Sonoma is one of those schools that will review that application. And you could probably know before the end of the year whether you're in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. All right. Okay, thank you all very much. We Perfect. appreciate it. I see the Harmons are here. Let me give them thank a shout out. Jasmine, cool. yeah, Sister Jasmine, glad you came. I don't know if your son's here. Is Giles here? Yes, sir, I'm here. Hey, what's up, man? What's hey. good? What's going on? Oh so much. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's what else do I see out there? Can I holler at everybody? I think I holler. Sister Barnes, how you doing? She's in here tonight. I don't know if her students are with her. The Harmons are here, I see. Not sure who's here tonight. And we thank you all for coming, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, Ricardo. Of hope course. To hope to see you in the by and by, maybe the spring. Yes, exchange. I hope so. <laughs> and I, I, I tell you, when they say we can travel again, I'm going up with a group probably in March. We'll April, be waiting. Summer. Yeah, I sure hope so. We, we used to go up there twice a year. We didn't get to do it since March, as you know, March 2020. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, have Thank a great you weekend, everyone. Thank All right. You. Bye bye now. Bye bye now. Thank, Thank you, Jen. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye. You're Thank very you. well. You're very welcome, Sister You're Chris. Me. Sister Wise, very welcome. Thank you, Kelly. All right. And Jillian. Look forward to the visit in March. Yeah, just you watch your email. I'll, when I do that, I'll invite 11th graders also. Okay. On that tour. We want to have a nice tour. And, uh, we already got a, a nice coupon from Southwest. They want us to fly again. So we're ready. Oh, nice. So Kelly and I are ready to go because we'd like you know. to make an informed decision before, you know, be ready yeah. for that decision in next year. Yeah, and you're welcome to all of our college nights. We'll make sure we invite you special to come um, to our college nights on Thursday, even though it's primarily seniors. Feel free to come, okay? Oh, I really appreciate it. Thanks Thank for thinking you. of us. All right. Bye-bye. Kelly, Kelly. Kelly hit a major ace tonight for volleyball. So. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, you didn't tell you were going to get this meeting closed. You wouldn't tell me. <laughs> you had an ace tonight? I did. How did it You're, look? That's scary. It was, it was really oh, so, that's a, so you had this alter ego. You had this other kind of <laughs> assertive side, huh? <laughs> she also was voted by her class, by her teammates as the team captain. Nice. Hey, yeah, Christine. Yeah. Hey, Christina, you hear that? Hey, Christina. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, you know, Christina Kelly's going to be bad. Bad means good. <laughs> if we had, if this was a basketball team, she'd be starting as a junior. Right. She's, she's bad. I'm looking at it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. She's Let so shy. I'm working on it. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm working on it. So hopefully we'll see you in March, but we want to go this year so that. When we yeah. give her to apply for next fall, we'll have a you oh, know, yeah. have time to do that and not be rushed. So is she part of her whole um, her, her suite of schools she's looking at? It's a good school to have in her in her in her pocket. Deacon, did she show you her the, her note she got from her teacher today? Uh, no. Where's your note from your teacher today? On the envelope. What oh yeah, we got time. <laughs> what she do? What she take? So at Gar High School, there is a top honor for uh -huh. classes. Can you bring it down with you? That's right. She's a Gar. She's yeah, a Gar. you know, 
As you know, I know your principal. Oh, I do know. That's how I met you. I know. I wanted you to say that for the Christina. That's how I met you. So show you, tell Deacon what this award is. She's a friend of the Lois's. Let's see. Oh, nice. For, oh, for honest chemistry. Ah, that reminds me of our conversation the other day. Uh-huh. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Outstanding achievement in chemistry. So that's a very listen, proud mama. You listen, you should be. Hey, we have a session. I, I was thinking about it the other day. Christina would remind me. We're going to have a session on the 7th with the most unusual science academy called Charles Drew. Uh, and uh, you, you might be interested in some of the stuff they're doing for the health science profession in general. I'll make sure you know about that. Don't worry. It's on our site right now. If you want to go to our event page and sign up, it's, it's a wonderful session. Darrell Black will be here. He'll be here for like a half hour on, a, on the 7th of September. And it, it's bad. Bad means good for sure with him. <laughs> I'll tell you some Saturday programs to keep you thinking about your science and your, your health career, you know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We are very excited. I, I got to do something special for this kid for this award. Yeah, you got to do that. I don't know. What's your favorite restaurant? I didn't ask that. I usually oh, ask man. that. I'm, I'm slipping. I usually ask that. Oh, man. You don't even want to know what Kelly's favorite restaurant is. <laughs> Kelly, tell him what your favorite restaurant is. What is it? Tell me. Don't be afraid. Come on. I know everything about my 11th graders. Tell me. Um, Christina won't laugh. Uh, my favorite one for the longest time has been Cheesecake Factory. Oh, yeah. But recently, I've liked either Fleming's or Ruth Chris. Ooh, Fleming's. Oh, man. <laughs> not start with me. Ruth Chris, too? I'm a steak. I'm a st and I'm a steak, dude? I love steaks. Oh, man. Me, too. Steak and seafood. Oh man, that's that's a shame that we like that. Isn't it? <laughs> I can get to none of those places. I need to go. I, I know. Oh, well, maybe that's what we're going to take. Cheesecake Factory. I haven't been there. Yeah, I'm gonna talk. I know, right? It's crazy. Yeah. I haven't. It's delicious. 